There are many theories attempting to explain the origins of the Great Sphinx and indeed its original purpose. We have, in the past, covered the compelling theories regarding an ancient celestial alignment to the Great Sphinx. Most popular among these alternative theories concerning the star constellation Leo. However, this theory is not only based upon events which happened over two precessions ago, but is also reliant upon the Great Sphinx actually once being that of an enormous lion. And although lions are mentioned in countless religious texts, ancient and also modern, with these beasts attributed to good deeds or evil, there actually exists another, and we feel more compelling theory regarding the Sphinx's true identity, purpose, and indeed its age. Since its rediscovery among the sands of Egypt, the Sphinx has been attributed to that of a guardian, long said to have protected the dead, and interestingly, this explanation may turn out to have been spot on. The Sphinx, although now possessing a human head, its form is noticeably out of proportion. If one indeed perceives it as a past guardian of the dead, and the underworld in which they dwell, then the Sphinx would have been in fact a dog, or more specifically, Anubis. Additionally, if the Sphinx did once indeed face a star in our night skies, then logically, there would only be one of two stars in which the dog would face, both held in high regard for untold millennia, one of which of course being Sirius, the other known as the little dog star Procyon. Interestingly, the star Sirius is held in high regard by many ancient cultures, some which insist that we were once visited by gods, locating from this particular star constellation. And with ancient Egyptian art drenched in mysterious beings, all attributed as gods who came from the heavens, it could be postulated that the Sphinx was guarding the entrance to what they perceived as the underworld or the realm in which the gods came from. What supports this theory and the possible concealment of this knowledge is the apparent destruction, and now absence, of any identifiable dog-like sphinxes left anywhere on Earth. Anthony West once brought the water controversy theory into the public domain, a theory he has done extremely well from. This evidence has long been used as a form of evidence that the sphinx is much older than currently claimed and due to the absence of this erosion on the Great Pyramids, also used it to claim it is much older. Additionally, he has also been a verbal advocate for the belief that the Sphinx was a lion. Worrying, however, regarding his motives, if this were indeed the case, then any compelling connections with the function of the Sphinx, the entrance beneath, and the pyramids, each made to specific sizes in relation to the distance of Orion stars, would be merely impossible to make. However, and what is most concerning, is that with a little research of ancient texts, it soon becomes apparent that the Sphinx was once surrounded by a body of water, conveniently named the Lake of the Jackal, or Anubis Lake. This aptly named body of water has seemingly been covered up, not only by West, but to attempt to conceal the Sphinx's real age, but also its true identity. This fragment of information not only discredits West's profitable rainfall theory, but also virtually confirms the Sphinx's past identity, and with Anubis being named elsewhere as the guardian of the underworld, it becomes apparent that we are on the brink of an explanation for its original purpose, no matter how astonishing. As one would come to realize, while traversing such fields of research as we do, you will inevitably come face to face with a worthy adversary. That foe, of course, is modern paradigm. Often scoffed at when discussing the possible existence of a highly trained, highly secret group of worldwide individuals who are tasked with the protection of a profitable lie. Often labeled a conspiracy theorist due to the vast array of missing evidence and stolen relics. Yet, alas, regardless of this, we feel it is our duty to vindicate all those who have suffered for doing nothing more than tell the truth. Many thanks to Will Hart over at Nexus Magazine in Spain for his exhaustive research. Let's start with a familiar friend, the Great Sphinx. In 1993, NBC aired a show titled The Mysteries of the Sphinx. 
During the show, geological evidence was shown, which indicated that the Sphinx was vastly older than Egyptologists currently claim. This evidence has subsequently become popularly known as the water erosion controversy. The self-taught Egyptologist John Anthony West first brought the evidence to the attention of geologist Dr. Robert Schock. Now, after thoroughly studying the Sphinx firsthand, numerous geologists share West's conclusions, and many have announced their findings to the world. Dr. Zawi Hawass, along with the Egyptian antiquities, have launched a barrage of public criticism at this new evidence. Renowned Egyptologist Dr. Mark Lehner, who is regarded as the world's foremost expert on the Sphinx, also joined this attack, publicly declaring West and Shock as ignorant and insensitive. The smear campaign was ultimately a success, and squashed any further exploration of the theory. This, regardless of the overwhelming evidence supporting their claims. And this intellectual mudslinging is unfortunately quite common. The case of author Michael Cremo could be seen as a well-documented example of this, and it also exposes just how the scientific establishment openly uses pressure tactics on the media and government to stifle historical truths. In Michael's book, Forbidden Archaeology, he examines many artifacts that prove modern man's antiquity far exceeds the age currently accepted by academia. In 1996, when NBC broadcasted a special program called The Mysterious Origins of Man, they covered material from Cremo's book. The reaction from the scientific community could be seen as verging on ridiculous. NBC was deluged with letters from furious scientists and others within certain fields who all called the producer a fraud and the whole program a hoax, even attempting to force NBC to not rebroadcast the popular program ever again. They went to the tremendous effort of presenting a case to the federal government, requesting that the Federal Communications Commission step in and bar NBC from airing the program again. This was not only an apparent infringement of free speech and a blatant attempt to thwart commerce, but up to that point, it was an unprecedented effort to censor intellectual discourse. Dr. Virginia Steen McIntyre would also feel the cold hands of conspiracy. A geologist working for the U.S. Geological Survey, she was dispatched to an archaeological site in Mexico with the task of dating a group of artifacts. This particular case, again, perfectly illustrates just how far this elusive establishment is willing to go to guard orthodox tenants. McIntyre used state-of-the-art equipment to date the relics, but her results were off the charts. The lead archaeologist expected a date of 25,000 years or less, yet she found dates of 250,000 years or more on multiple occasions. A dating of 25,000 years is conveniently critical to the Bering Strait crossing theory. Once her results were realized, the head archaeologist decided to dispose of Steen McIntyre's results. She has since found it hard to get her papers published, and she has also lost a teaching job at an American university. These sorts of scenarios from these particular types of people is what drives us to expose the truth. No one should lose their career because they are doing it correctly. Unfortunately, however, unless there is a dramatic shift within our own society, stories such as these are likely to continue. We recently shared the astonishing discovery of a colossal ancient pyramid, Cholula. Not only the largest ancient pyramid believed to have ever been found on Earth, but also the biggest ancient structure ever found, just like that of the Bosnian pyramid, long assumed a mound of peculiar shape. This truly huge structure was buried under often meters of fertile earth. Some claim it was buried to conceal it from invaders, such as David Carballo, an archaeologist at Boston University, who explained to BBC Future, quote, it was abandoned sometime in the 7th or 8th century CE. The Chilateca had a newer pyramid temple located nearby, which the Spaniards destroyed, end quote. While geologists argue that over the centuries, or indeed millennia it has stood, the mud bricks its exterior was created from have fertilized and naturally grown over this huge structure, earth which still hides much of its stature from the world to this day. Yet this makes the discovery no less of interest, 
If anything, it makes it all the more intriguing. Why not fully excavate the site? Are there things being hidden there? What was the purpose of such an astonishing building being made? Was it as a tribute to a deity? Or are we looking at an enormous tomb? Like the claims that circle Giza's three great structures year upon year, are their treasures still buried beneath, just waiting to be found? Interestingly, there does indeed exist an underworld labyrinth beneath this great site. An entire town-sized maze of ancient tunnels, littered beneath the site, again a feature akin to Giza. Yet any mention of sarcophagi, treasures, tombs, or any other interesting discoveries, local archaeologists remain curiously silent, regardless of this structure's clear past importance. According to Geophys, the adobe brick pyramid stands 55 meters or 180 feet above the surrounding plain, far shorter than the 137 meters or 449 feet of the Great Pyramid Cheops in Giza but also much wider, measuring 450 by 450 meters, or 1480 by 1480 feet, versus Cheops at 230 by 230 meters, or 750 by 750 feet. Yet we must not forget to mention the astonishing precision present within Giza, seemingly absent this nonetheless gigantic structure, which we find highly compelling.